Today is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. We take a look at the importance of this day and how women and girls in Africa are faring in this field. Also, Nigeria's House of Representatives has waded into what can now be called Fuel Gate. We look at the latest in the Bar Fuel Saga with a guest analyst. We have analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies, these and more ahead of the breakfast. A very good morning to you. It's uh, Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Welcome, my name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. As GD Johnson would say, thank God it's Friday. It promises to be fantastic, great time. Two hours of amazing conversation right here. And as always, we will set off with Top Trending. Now, these are conversations generating a lot of reactions across board in different spaces. Coffee. Interesting. <laughs> it's it's um it's uh it's been a whirlwind few days. I cannot wait for the second topic, but also the first one very important because science and technology and women are important. Um, uh, lots of lots of stories trending in in Nigeria yesterday. Even up to this morning, people talking about them. Um, let's start with the first one. Yes, indeed. The the fuel the, the bullion. Um, van attack, and uh, I don't know if you you, you saw the uh, you know the responses people were having on social media as well regarding that. You know the fact that um, it's, it's not something we're used to. It's been a while since I I heard about a bullion van being attacked in this country. You know um, because you expect that there's always security. You know we're used to seeing the bullion vans that move money from bank to bank or from bank to house. Let's not go into bank to house for now, because, you know, <laughs> we don't want to ruffle any feathers. But um, um, you, we used to see, you know, uh, uh, police and security guarding the bullion vans. But this is what happened in, in your state. Um, uh, two policemen and a civilian were, were confirmed dead. And we told that armed robbers attacked that bullion van. You can see uh, images of uh, cracked windshields and windows and bullet holes in riddled cars. Um, two armed robbers attacked the bullion van conveying money from a bank in Iwo Road in uh, the ED Akpe area of Oyos, Ibadan, Oyos State. This is in the heart of, of Ibadan. And um, um, that's Iwo Road in ED Akpe area of Ibadan, Oyos State. It was gathered at one of the Hoodlums was also killed during a shootout with the police. It's really sad that two policemen had to lose their lives um, in the course of duty, in the line of duty. It was in the afternoon, broad daylight, you can see, at about 1.35 p.m. Uh, yesterday, uh, where the robbers reportedly waylaid. They waylaid the bullion van. You can see that security vehicle there. And uh, this looks like a bulletproof car because um, uh, the shots should have, um, you know, punched some holes in in, in the windshield or the, the windscreen and the windows. Um, so probably the policemen came out to engage, you know, the, the attackers and two policemen died. It's really, really, really sad. Uh, the bullion van was heading towards the gate area of Ibadan uh, when the armed hoodlums who were in a Toyota Sienna overtook the van and opened fire on the occupants and the police escorts. And one of the victims reportedly killed was an Okada rider. Really sad who was oblivious of the mission of the occupants of that Siena. Really sad. Um, the commercial motorist, motorist or motorcyclist was said to uh, be in a hurry and reportedly attempted to overtake the hoodlum's vehicle when he was shot dead by the robbers. Really sad. Um, now, the, the eyewitnesses, those residents who stay around the area, also said that the escorts engaged, this is police escorts now, engaged the robbers in the shootout, is what I just said, you know, adding that the hoodlums outnumbered the operatives and killed two of them, you know. So it, it, it's unfortunate. Um, I remember the video that was trending online of uh, a South African um, Hest, uh, bullion van Hest, and these guys were in the, in the bullion van driving, and they refused to come down till they drove, because they knew it was a bulletproof, till they drove to the destination, place more secure where, you know, they could have backup to attack the the uh, 
the robbers. It, it's really sad, you know, really sad. You know, mercy we have two policemen dying in, in, in the course of duty. I know Nigerians always have a criticism for the police when they go out of line, but I don't think there's any Nigerian who will be happy to hear that a policeman has died. No, but um, contrary to all of that now, you also have um, some person saying that this actually happened very close to um, a very big, that's the word I would say, close to a police station. It was just a few meters. That's the argument right now. And people are saying that this, uh, you know, robbery incident, the attack on the Villian van happened very close to, um, a, you know, police station, a prison. They talked about also um, a testing ground. And so some people are saying, what's going on? Should we begin to question the police? How come we didn't have, um, you know, efforts, I mean, see efforts from the police station. So you want to expect that if you have a police station that's very around, and then you should have police officers who would intervene. But another question you want to ask yourself again is, were they armed? Uh, it's also another thing. Did, did they have what it takes to attack them? The argument is on. One of the arguments, some people are saying that, oh, these are human beings, and we should make an excuse for them. And others are saying, no, they are trained for these and they cannot take cover while you have civilians i mean just ordinary ordinary civilians taking cover that should actually be but it's really sad it just brings us back to the conversation the main conversation and the right i mean the gist here is that security is still top on the list and there's a lot that we need to do we cannot fold the arms and say oh um, this is not actually happening to me right now at this point in time and therefore let's overlook it like we always know, like we know, the top on the list is that uh, security and protection of lives and properties of citizens should be a priority of every government. Now, you have security challenges in Nigeria, because if you look at the country in Nigeria, the security challenges are encompassing. From the fact that you have almost 10 million out of school children and social vices, you cannot take that away, to the fact that we need to pay attention. I mean, when you have you know, a police station very close to where this incident is happening, then you expect that there would be you know, that particular attack. But another question is, well, this, I mean, the police station that's close by, are they properly equipped? Do they have what it takes? Were they armed? you know, to attack these armed robbers and all of that. But this is what I am hoping, and a lot of Nigerians are also anticipating that um, you, the law would actually take its course. And those who are responsible, those behind this um, criminal um, act would be brought to book without any um, missing or that, missing that, that, words. That, that's that's uh, uh, um, the expectation, you know, um, and of course uh, we expect that uh, they'll be brought to book, but you know, it's easier said than done. Um, the the facilities and the um, the technology um, and and the 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 the, the, uh, the competence of our security agencies to flow through with cases, um, uh, get to the bottom of cases and and fish out culprits, usually is hampered by some of the things that they don't have. Um, you know, and, and they are over, overburdened and saddled with the responsibility of so many cases. I mean, if we want to take a look at the um, unex, unexplained, uninvestigated or incomplete cases that the police have, you know, they are not able to get to the bottom of things because of some of the, um, the limitations that they, they face. It's a lot. It's a lot. You know, I, I, I call them unsolved cases. It's a lot. We, we do hope they can get to the bottom of this and that the culprits can be brought to book. I know that the Inspector General of Police is also on top of this as well, but um, it is sad, sad that uh, we have we have um, um, three people being needlessly killed. I mean, in, in such a, a manner, you know, uh, a, a motorcyclist who was going around his business uh, went left the house and you know expected to make his daily you know income to go back home to his family, just um, his life snuffed out like that. You know, and then two police officers also went to work expecting to go back home to their family, also have their lives snuffed out like that. But it, it, it's clear from the footage that the, the police vehicle, I don't know which was the bullion van, whether it's the one that has the siren on top, uh, but that vehicle looks like um, it has a, a bulletproof um, um, windscreen. No, it does. Yes, it and uh, bulletproof. Um, so, so it may have been maybe wiser to, some are saying, um, to, to keep going. You know, to keep going and to drive uh, all the way to to the point of um, 
uh, where they can have, um, you know, maybe an entire station, for instance, and have But I'm not, I'm not aware of the full details because it's a bit sketchy right now. Whether you have the, the policeman in maybe an a, a, another van, you know, because sometimes they're another van and looking out and all that. And maybe the police can now look at how to um, uh, bring about some reform and changes. Is it, is it wise to have the policeman escorting these amounts of money um, in an open open pickup truck? Basically, that's what it is. Or should it also be in a, in a bulletproof um, uh, vehicle to make sure they're safe? Because um, you can't just say, okay, four or five policemen, they could be outnumbered at some time. Look at now, um, they were outfired, you know, out outgunned. So it, it's really sad, really sad. So, so like, we, like you rightly mentioned, and like I have also stated, and Nigerians are anticipating that those responsible for this crime will be brought to book, and that's what it is. If you, if you want to begin to look at the, how this actually happened, even though you're not there, you would definitely tell that there probably would have been an intel. And having intel is one thing that we haven't been, I mean, you have a lot of security experts saying that we haven't been very great with intel uh, in terms of security. So yes, I'm sure that there probably would have been an information from within, you know, to get to that particular point. But fingers are really crossed, and we'll see how all of this pan out. We're hoping that the police here and every security agency would bring those behind this to book, and the law and justice would actually have its place. And our heart actually goes out to those who have lost their lives in the course of this, including, you know, the uh, men of the Nigerian police force. Our heart really goes out to them. And uh, we pray that justice actually be meted out. So we have some more trending stories, Mercy? Yes, and um, looking at also another trending story is the fact that the Central Bank of Nigeria has put out deposit money banks on notice that they will, not, they will stop selling uh, Forex to them by the end of 2022. And uh, this has also generated a lot of controversy. So the, the, some people are asking that if you have the CBN saying we're not going to be selling Forex to the deposit, I mean, all of these banks now, how do you expect them? Where do they source from? The question is, so where are they going to be sourcing Forex from? So it's a question right now. And uh, I really do not know what the CBN governor, uh, I don't know what would be the reason for all of this policy or this policy at this point in time. But uh, fingers are crossed, and we hope that we get more of the conversation as we proceed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot that is, um, it's on, it's on clear as of now. Um, I mean, even if you go through uh, all the sources, um, we, we've still not gotten the, the exact entire information. But, um, um, you know, Nigerians and people in this country, even foreigners, go to the depo deposit money banks to, to um, obtain this forex. And, um, but not all Nigerians can, can obtain the foreign exchange um, or foreign currency or hard currency, like they call it, from the deposit money banks. You know, a majority of, of us go to the, the streets, um, the black market, to get this, you understand. And um, what the CBN has tried to do to protect the Naira, because it's been, uh, the Naira's been battered, really seriously battered. Um, what the CBN has tried to do um, before now was to um, try different, different strategies to try and protect the Naira. And um, the first thing I, I can remember uh, was to chase away um, um, some so-called abokis who were, uh, them no, selling. Who, uh, sorry, Messi. Hold on. Who were selling um, uh, USD and um, doing the black market thing in Abuja? What happened? We were told. We were told. I read so in one of the papers that they had to hack down some trees on the streets of Abuja so that these guys can't stand there to to exchange, um, you know, some money. But I'm, I won't be surprised if the CBN had denied it. I didn't see that. Then secondly, um, uh, Abuki, the Abuki FX saga, where the online, um, the website. Like gives information on both um, parallel and official rates, and um, was was blamed for the the, the woes of the naira, and uh, site is no more. Um, then we had the CBN then said it wasn't going to give monies to um, certain uh, foreign forex bureaus, but we'll go ahead and start giving more of the money of the US dollars to or the foreign exchange to the commercial banks. So Nigerians being urged to go to the banks to to you know, transact business, either to get foreign exchange or to do to whatever they want to do. And also brought about an incentive where they give you, I think about 100 Naira or so, or 500 Naira for every, um, a certain amount of money that you receive into the country and you take from the banks, you know, they will give you an amount of money as an incentive. So they've been trying to steer Nigerians away from the streets, you know, from the uh, black market to the banks. 
in a bid to protect the Naira. So I do not know what the intention of this policy is and how it's going to affect the Naira. So, so the, the big question here is, uh, as much as that might be the case, you also need to, I mean, we need to take into cognizance the fact that the CBN is the nation's, uh, uh, you know, the head of the nation's bank. And so if you're now saying you're not going to be supplying Forex, you know, to those banks, the question will now be the CBN. Where do you want them to source it from? Because at the end of the day, the pressure is going to be mounted on the battered economy. And you, 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 you we probably might just be looking at the dollar, 2,000, you know, 2,000 euro to a dollar. So that's a lot of pain for the common man, the average Nigerian. I mean, there's a lot that we have to grapple with at this point in time. You look at the fact that the, the number of uh, persons that are unemployed, unemployment is a big issue insecurity that have made a lot of investors pull out. Uh, as much as we think that this is a joke, I really do not know across the entire country. There are businesses that have crippled because of the insecurity issues that we're faced with. And so that's number one. You also have the fact that inflation also, it's on the other side. I mean, it's stop on the charts. With all of this, now we were, we're also grappling with the issue of fuel scarcity and uh, you know the prices and every other thing going up. So it's a lot of pain right now. I f I'm also hoping that you know the CBN governor. We have a lot of intellectuals in this country. I mean, and, and we're hoping that we would look at policies that would actually at this point reduce the pain of Nigerians and not really increase it as yeah, much as yeah. it is. It, because sometimes you have policies that are very good. I mean, not to say, there are some policies that are very, the intentions might be um, very genuine and it probably will lead us somewhere. But you also need to look at the timing and you begin to ask yourself, at what point do you introduce it? Because if you have to introduce it, then you have, you probably would have already put some measures in ground. But we hope that we speak with you. Yeah, I was just team. about to say that the, yeah. um, the, the central bank governor uh, Gordon Mayfield is, um, is is saying that uh, you know the, the 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 decision is in line with the commitment of the Apex uh, Bank to um, uh, to boost the country's foreign reserves through proceeds from non-oil exports, you know proceeds from non-oil exports. So, um, uh, sale of foreign exchange to deposit money banks by the end of the year, um, um, what is it going to cost? Because you know, we know that from from basic economic economics that um, you know uh, prices will rise. If, if you have a, a, a much of something chasing a few of something. So if Nigerians, where are Nigerians going to go to to get the U.S. dollars? I, I don't think they don't know what they're doing, but I'm curious to know where, you know, Nigerians will go to to get the U.S. dollars. So um, um, sorry, if you have, you have a lot of people going out for a few USD in circulation, then, of course, you expect that the, the dollar naira rate is going to, it's going to spike up. You know, so I don't know what the what the plan is, but I think they have something in mind. No, so so the plan already is this. I mean, without having to get the MF, uh, that's the CBN governor Godwin Mefili to speak with us. The issue of revenue generation is very big for us. We haven't been faring very well with generating revenue, and of course, every government will want to right now every means and anyhow to generate revenue without thinking would be top on the chart, and it might feel like that's what's going on. Because yes, it probably might just be a way of you know generating the foreign reserve and ensuring that you know the foreign reserve is on the high. But the point now is, what's the implication of this action of the CBN on the economy? And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, governance is very important. We need to pay attention to the people that we're governing and understand you know the plight of the people, and that's what Nigerians are actually asking for. But fingers are crossed. We see how all of this unfolds, and we'll probably but, speak but, with but, you but know an economist. The foreign you know, reserves have. have Really taking the battery, you know. Um, when, you know, it, it dropped. It dropped by uh, 537. This is in February. This is the same month. Uh, it was reported to have dropped by 537.45 million dollars. That's the amount of money that was um, that left the nation's foreign reserves uh, uh, between January 4 and uh, February 4, 2022, um, according to the latest data on the CBN's website. So, what you had there, just between. The month of January and February, it was a $537.45 million reduction. You know, and um, it's been adduced, or, you know, uh, uh, the, the reason for this could be that the CBN has been doing everything it can to support the Naira, you know, taking money from the reserves. Nigeria sells oil, makes some money, puts in those, in those foreign reserves, and then it has to take those dollars, 
put it into the economy so that you can have more naira in circulation and then probably the hopes are that it would boost the the um uh, the 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 exchange rate help the naira rise you know if you have more dollars in circulation and, but, but, and so, but so action, it, it seems this is, it seems it's a change of strategy um, because he's been taking usd and giving to banks taking usd and giving to just to make sure you have enough in circulation um and this seems to be a change in policy but um, and I think another thinking could be that if you have, because nations, the strength of currency of nations can also be tied to how much um, the, the extent of the uh, the size of your foreign foreign reserves. You understand? If you have a healthy foreign reserve, it, so it, it can make your currency strong. So um, I do not know, but 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 the external reserves is stood at forty point five one eight billion dollars at the beginning of this year and declined to thirty nine point nine eight billion dollars as of February four two thousand and twenty two. That may be. Uh, a concern. So the concern here is, as much as we want, we need to move away from this, uh, we're talking about, like I rightly mentioned, the overall goal would be that the CBN and of course the Nigerian government, thinking of how to regenerate revenue, have you know that foreign reserve. But does this particular action help in uh, stabilizing the naira and increasing our foreign reserve? It's you know a question that we have, and we hope that we have an economist and an, uh, you know professional actually answer that. Away from that. You also have another top trending conversation. Really sad. I mean, I particularly had to look for this young man and his page. A man who sexualized a 14-year-old neighbor. And uh, I don't know if time will permit, so I probably just go through his uh, script, even though he has actually put out another write-up. And so he said, oh, um, so he has a neighbor who is left at 14. So funny how this, our neighbor is trusting me with a 14-year-old daughter. And uh, ma'am, with this thing she's carrying front and back. Oh, ma'am. Uh, I don't, oh, ma'am, oh, ma I don't trust myself. They are traveling to the village for one uh, relative traditional wedding, and probably they are going to come back on Sunday or Monday. And uh, he also mentioned that they can't take their daughter along because of school. And me, I'm staying home throughout this weekend, and because of some personal reason, it's got not wonderful, really. So, 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 so this well. is, and she said um, she was smiling up and down, and I just pre, oh no. I don't even want to go through all of that because it's really he sad. He said he shouldn't oxalate, oxalate. What is the meaning of I shouldn't oxalate No, but you, you can't take out the fact that we don't understand what that means. I mean, if you've been following the trend, we recently saw the sex tape of Oxlade. I haven't, he's a I haven't musician seen the, the sex tape. He, he's right. actually on there. And so this is really pathetic. This is really sad. This is really a PDO file putting out a script. The good thing is that Nigerians actually, I like the fact that you know social media would have a strength and uh, actually weakness. And he's come out of the bunk and said, oh, his deleted it. It was just a joke. Well, how do you even joke about this? Because this is a 14-year-old that we're talking about. And so moving forward, you look at this young man. Is it okay for you to entrust, you know, a minor around him? It's quite unfortunate that we see a lot of 14-year-olds and below 14 and above who are constantly being um, taken advantage of to those who should protect them from their teachers to their parents and to their uncles and aunties, family relative teachers neighbors and what have you it is really really sad mm -hmm. but as parents we have a role to play i'm like i'm saying you know the family would we, we constantly cannot say because we're chasing money we need to you know make a living we need to get pay the bills and we don't pay attention we need to pay attention the times are quite not favorable and we we you just can't entrust you know your children and even if you do um there's a lot of work to be done so yes i'm hoping that we get to that point and everyone you pay attention to the people you leave your kids with including the teachers in school I've had my own share of experience, but you know, I'm sure that some other day we get to talk about all of this one. But it's really, really, really sad, and that this is what society is about. And so, um, the support system need to be out there to ensure that we protect, you know, these minors. Absolutely, um, it, it, it's 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 really disturbing, um, you know. And and you've said, you know, it's it's not a one-off mercy that even you know personal experience and all that. Um, a lot is happening that is not being addressed by um, by society, the, the family, the you know religious you know circle, the uh, the government. Um, we we need to we need to look into the welfare of children. You you mentioned the Child's Rights Act yesterday, and um, you know when I hear people talk about the Child's Rights Act, I laugh because you know even for states that have passed it, not not in a condescending way, but it's it's laughable. You know, for states that have passed it, 
um, it's just on paper. You know the of things course. here. The things that 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 paper says. I don't even know if the commissioners for um, uh, women affairs and social welfare, including the police and uh, the police and the governor, even know about these these the words because you know it's just like the governor of Lagos State seeing three children and you know picking you know, the appeals and all them. But there are kids everywhere. So so um, the the issue of of child, child children welfare or the welfare of the child. Um, in Africa, you know, it, it's 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 relegated. Um, in our society, children are thought, taught to to keep quiet, you know, and taught to uh, you know just just um, shush and hush, you know. It, it's unfortunate. Why has the police not said anything about this till now? Why have we not had? I don't know. Maybe if they have, um, I haven't seen it. You know, I don't need women rights groups to come and be saying things like this. It's not going to change anything. Before even the women rights groups come, even men should say it. it's not even women's rights things. The police by now should have picked up and said, explain what you're saying. We see what's happening in UK. Someone kicked the cat and is losing his sponsorship deals. You know, we need to be hard on, on things like this. It's not, it has no place in our society. Well, we need to move away and uh, hopefully we have this conversation some other time and where we would look at issues very extensively. Uh, when we return off the press, would be right in front of us. We'll look at all, the, all of the papers uh, being made available by a newspaper vendor. Please stick around.